Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars figure review. Today we're going to take a look at one more Mission Series 2 pack from Hasbro and we're going to take a look at one of the most eagerly anticipated Mission Series 2 packs from the entire Mission Series line. Once again these, uh, this pack features two characters from Star Wars Rebels and it is none other than the Mandalorian heroine Sabine Wren and an Imperial Stormtrooper. Now, while only one of these figures is brand new to the Mission Series line, I've got to say, this is an awesome, awesome pack. Um, there are a few things that I've found to be uh, not so much wrong with the set, but things that have been overlooked that probably shouldn't have been, and I'll talk about those in just a little bit. But before I do, as always, we're going to take a look at the packaging that these figures come in. Once again, we have the awesome Star Wars Rebels packaging design to this set with the Rebels logo at the top, the Stormtrooper featured in the background, and on either side of the card we have an image of the Stormtrooper and Sabine Wren herself. On the back of the box we have a very cool image of Sabine um, putting some of her artistic protests to use on the walls of Lothal. As you can see there's a down Stormtrooper sat down chilling out in the background there. Got a character description just below that image and underneath that we have some more Mission Series packs available in this range. Once again, these two sets won't be reviewed, but if you want to check out reviews on these two, then feel free to have a browse of my channel, or alternatively, check out my Star Wars Rebels playlist. Um, you'll see reviews on both Wolf Warrior and the Wookiee Warrior, Visago and IGRM, plus many more action figures and vehicles from the Rebels line. So that is the packaging that these guys come in. Once again, if you want to pick this set up for yourself, you can do so via the link in the video description. Be sure to hit up staractionfigures.co.uk as they've got most of these sets in stock now. Some of them will be available to pre-order, you know, it depends on stock levels, but you can get the majority of this collection via Star Action Figures, so I'd highly recommend you do so. Moving on, let's take a look at these awesome figures, and we'll begin by taking a look at Sabine Wren. Now Sabine is a very cool figure and a very cool character in the Star Wars Rebels series. Uh, the main thing that points out or stands out to me about this character and her design is the fact that she very closely resembles Bo-Katan who was the female Mandalorian warrior seen in the Clone Wars. She features a very similar helmet design and you know her agility and skill and all that sort of stuff in the series uh, definitely screams Bo-Katan to me as well. So. Uh, it was, it's obvious that Dave Filoni had a, a soft spot for that character and tried to incorporate elements of her design into Sabine. Now, despite this being a very, very cool figure, as I said, there are a few flaws with it, and most of those lie within the paint job. Now, a couple of things that I noticed while I was watching the Star Wars Rebels animated series is that Hasbro missed out a lot of paint applications on this figure. As you can see, on one of her shoulders, she should feature the black and white checkered pattern, which sadly is absent on the figure. And on the other side, on this orange shoulder plate, she should feature um, a painted Anuba, which is a basically a, a Star Wars dog. Um, for those of you that saw the Clone Wars, um, the bounty hunter Embo used to uh, walk around with one of these, and uh, for whatever reason, Sabine had one painted on the side of her um, shoulder plate and you can see that on the image on the card back which is just there. Now I want to give a big thanks to uh, all my followers over on Facebook for helping me out with that one. Um, I was watching Rebels recently and I had absolutely no idea um, what the name of this creature was so uh, I put out a little public service announcement over on Facebook and uh, a lot of people replied to that and helped me out with what creature that was, so I do greatly appreciate that guys. So if any of you are watching, big thumbs up. But yeah, I'm a little bit saddened that Hasbro missed out some of these vital paint applications, you know. Uh, the different colours and all the wild patterns really add to Sabine's character in the show, and it's really sad to see them missed out on the figure. So, you know, that disappoints me a little bit, but not to the point where it's a deal breaker for me not to pick up this figure. What I will be a little bit irritated by is the fact that we'll probably see an updated and corrected version of Sabine later on down the line and Hasbro will expect me and many others to fork out more money for her. So uh, that's the only disappointing aspect of this figure. Um, she also should feature some paint splats on the forearms but again those are absent but not a major deal breaker 
in terms of the rest of the figure. Uh, in terms of the overall deco, what we actually get with this one is really good. We've got the Rebel Alliance symbol printed on the chest plate as well as the white stripes there. We've also got those painted decals on the helmet as well which look really really cool. Especially those uh, sort of spiky flame decals on the back. Definitely remind me of the female Mandalorian Rav Braylor from some of those Mandalorian packs that were released a few years ago. Now one really cool aspect of this particular figure is the fact that Hasbro even went as far as to sculpt some of Sabine's hair poking out of the back of her helmet. Now sadly, um, a question that a lot of people have been asking is, is Sabine's helmet removable? Now unfortunately it isn't. Um, you know, that's another key flaw to this figure, um, but again it's not a major deal breaker. I would have loved to have seen a removable helmet on Sabine, but uh, alas, again, it's probably something that Hasbro are saving to exploit more money from us later on down the line. Again though, what we get with this actual figure is perfectly fine and acceptable and I'll take what I can get right now to get a Sabine figure in my collection. In terms of accessories, as you can see, she does feature two very cool Mandalorian pistols. These are very similar in terms of design to the ones that Pre Vizsla and the Mandalorian warriors in the Clone Wars use. Sadly, they're not painted, but that's to be expected from Hasbro recently. You know, their paint applications and uh, overall product quality seems to be uh, dwindling. Um, and the uh, paint applications on the blasters are no exception. She does have two working holsters for each of her blasters though, those located on the side of the leg. Uh, sadly the blasters are a little bit loose when you plop these in, um, but again it's not a major issue. She holds the blasters perfectly well and she does look much better with them in hand anyway. As you can see she's got some more sculpted detail on the legs, she's got the uh, straps on the boots, the knee pads, obviously the belt. One other sculpted detail that is absent from this figure that I would have liked to have seen is the uh, sort of comm links and all the gadgets that she has on her forearms. Um, she doesn't wear these all the time, so I can kind of accept um, that Hasbro left them out on this figure. But obviously during all the missions and all the infiltration that she takes part in, when she goes and spray paints all the uh, TIE fighters and what have you, she does wear these comm links and communication devices on the forearms. So it would have been nice to have seen a fully geared up Sabine Wren figure released, but again, it's not a major issue, it's just a bit of a, no, oh, I wish that was included, do you know what I mean? So, not a, a massive problem. Obviously the range finder isn't movable either, which is, you know, a standard for the Saga Legends line, Boba Fett and Jango Fett's range finders weren't posable either, so it's not a major issue once again. But as you can see, the rest of the figure is very cool. What we actually get isn't all that bad, it's just some of those errors should have been corrected prior to release in my opinion. So that's Sabine Wren, very cool character from Rebels. And a very cool figure as well. Now the second figure in this pack is of course some Rebel cannon fodder in the form of the Imperial Stormtrooper. And this is the exact same Stormtrooper that we've seen on the basic carded release and also in the Zebrelius and Stormtrooper Mission Series 2 pack from Wave 1, I believe. Um, you know, nothing too special with this figure. He is just a standard trooper. Um, but he is a nice throwback to the original Kenner Stormtroopers, you know, in terms of articulation and overall look. He has a very slender and slim build. He's got a very large bucket head which looks pretty cool as well, nice paint applications on there for once, not too sloppy. And in terms of articulation he does feature the standard five points, he's got the swivel neck, swivel shoulders and swivel hips. Sadly he still features the printed serial number on the back of his leg, which I've pointed out in numerous reviews that this needs to stop. It stands out like a sore thumb and in many ways really takes away from the figure. So I would have liked to have seen that absent, but nevertheless what we actually get here is a good figure. He does come with an E11 blaster rifle as well, so he's what you'd expect from a, a Star Wars Rebels animated style stormtrooper. Nothing too special and nothing we haven't seen already. So the main focus of this pack is of course Sabine. Um, it would have been much better to have seen her individually carded, um, but at the same time it's nice that Hasbro decided to include an army builder 
uh, in this two pack rather than include a character that we already have um, such as the upcoming Kanan and Ezra two pack uh, which features Ezra in his Imperial Cadet outfit but there are no differences at all with Kanan you know he's the exact same figure that we've seen already so um, that will probably be a pack that gets skipped and I'll try and uh, hunt Ezra down loose if I can but uh, this is definitely a pack that I'd recommend picking up it's probably the ha most highly sought after set from Wave 2 or is it Wave 2? no it might be Wave... I don't know what Wave it is Wave whatever it is from the Mission Series line it's definitely a highly recommended set but as I said everybody seems to want to get their hands on this one at the minute so if you do see it out in the wild or online and you want to pick this one up, don't hesitate to do so because it's a really cool pack and definitely one I'd recommend. So that's going to do it for this review on Sabine Wren and the Imperial Stormtrooper. Somewhere down the line I'll try and shoot an Instagram snap of Sabine with the rest of our rebel heroes, but obviously we're still missing one vital character from the Ghost crew, and that is Hera Syndulla. She will be coming in a future Mission Series pack as well, so hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on that and give it a review for you as well. So I want to thank you for watching this review, guys, as always. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until my next one, as always, keep collecting and may the Force be with you.